Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. We're continuing our Langsmith evaluation series focused on back testing today. So to, to motivate this, let's say we had an app in production. Uh, say, for example, it's one of our RAG apps that we kind of talked about in some prior videos. Um, and the particular RAG app uh, in our case is GPT-4 Turbo using a vector store. So that's in production. We're collecting production traffic from users based using this app version. Now, what happens if we want to try a different variant? Like, let's say I want to try context stuffing rather than using my vector store. Um, one really convenient and nice thing to be able to do there is take a bunch of production logs we've already collected and just run my new app variant on them and see how the output compares, right? That's a really common thing you might want to do. So if you look at our framework here, we're talking about the data set actually can come from existing production logs. That's really convenient. We don't have to build some like curated data set from it. We can just take user data that actually has been you know, contributed to our existing app and turn that into a data set. So that's step one. And we can test then a different app variant on those same inputs. So that's really useful. And we can use like a pairwise evaluator, compare our new variant of the app to our old or production version that's running currently. So that's like a common workflow. Now let's walk through this. So I'm going to create a new project. I'll call it back testing. I'll create a, a new one here, back testing, let's say V2. Um, and here's my app. So let's say this is running in production. Here's a few user questions related to language and expression language. So if you call this particular app um, is actually ingesting information about language and expression language. And um, so these are all running. Cool. So we can just kick a few of these off. Um, Great. So I've run five different uh, user questions uh, through my app. Now, assume this is, you know, obviously we're doing the notebook, but assume this is a production app. It's it's just out there. These are users interacting with your app, right? So that's what we're simulating here. Now, I've created this project backtesting v2. We can go over to Langsmith. Um, I can look at my projects page and it's here. And so great. So here's all my traces. They're all logged here. So that's fantastic. Um, now what I can do is this code right here will take these traces so I can specify my, like my, my run filters in terms of like start and end time. Um, and I can choose the project that I want to grab from. So in this case, it's this project we just logged to. And basically what we can do here is I can create a new data set. So I'm taking these user logs effectively right here. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm turning them into a new data set. So now we'll see if you go over to our data sets page, we have this new data set called backtesting v2 and it has like the exact time and so forth. And what you'll see here is pretty nice. Um, those user inputs are now just simply inputs in my data set. So I've kind of sucked them into a data set. That's all I've done. Now, what I can do here is I can run an evaluation on this data that we just created using a different variant of my app. So I'll call this, this predict rag answer GPT-4 Turbo is a different app variant. This particular variant doesn't use a vector store, it does context stuffing, um, which we can talk about a little bit later. But let's say I kick off that evaluation. So I run that right now. So if I can, I can go back to my data set here, we can see a new experiment has been kicked off. And what's pretty cool about this, when I create this data set, my initial experiment is the prod baseline. So that's basically my production app that we've been using that we logged from. Um, and that is actually what we collected our our inputs and our outputs initially from. So this is kind of like our baseline, right? This is our inputs, this is our outputs from that baseline version we looked at initially. Now I've just run a new experiment using our variant, right? So this is a GPT-4 Turbo, so that's what I just kicked off and this is running now, you can see it's still running. Um, you can see kind of the name here, my experiment prefix GPT-4 Turbo and that is what uh, you can see here. So GPT-4 Turbo, so that's great, so that's all running. And we can check and see the state of that experiment. It looks like it's still going. Um, cool. So there's one more to go. And it looks like it's done. So that's great. So now we are finished. So here's where things get kind of interesting. So I've run. So let me just back up. What do we do here? So if I go all the way back. 
first, I had a project that I was logging to. So this is simulating, um, for example, like a, a production app, and these are user user interactions that are being logged to some particular project. What I've done is I've taken these 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 input and output pairs, and I've pulled them into a new data set. And you can see that right here. I suck those in. And by default, when I do that, that baseline is grabbed as my prod baseline. So this is what my production app inputs and outputs. Now, what's cool is I was able to just run a new experiment with my new app version on those same user inputs, but now I have my new outputs. So these are the outputs from my new chain. So that's great. Now this all comes together in kind of a cool way because I can use a pairwise evaluator to compare them. So I just created a new pairwise evaluation prompt for this particular task. And I, I think I already have it open here. Great. So this particular task, if you recall, is code question answering based on the LangChain expression language documentation. So I set up my pairwise prompt and I just say, you know, please act as a judge to evaluate the quality of, of code responses from two assistants um, related to LangChain expression language. I give my criteria here, begin your evaluation comparing the responses based upon, do they contain a clear overview of the problem? Do they contain code imports? Do they contain code solution, right? Um, so you yeah, don't allow length to affect the results and so forth. So anyway, that's my evaluation prompt. Now, I've I can define this pairwise evaluator. We just already talked about this in the last video. So you've already seen a good example of that. I'm creating a pairwise evaluator right here. And what's pretty cool is I can run that pairwise evaluator on my two experiments. So this is, my, this is the name of my most recent experiment. It's GPT-4 Turbo, boom. And my initial experiment, I can go back and get that name. So it's this prod baseline. So I can just plug those in. Okay. So I'm running a comparative evaluation between my prod baseline and my new app variant that I ran back testing on. I kick that off. So now this is running. And of course it's gonna be logged to the same overall uh, data set here. So if I go back to my data set, Recall we had two experiments, my prod baseline, my back testing, which is running the same prod inputs with my new chain, GPT-4 Turbo with context stuffing. Um, and now I've kicked off a, uh, an experiment that's comparing the two. So it's comparing my prod baseline versus my new variant, GPT-4 Turbo with context stuffing versus the, the baseline, if you recall, is actually using retrieval from a vector store. Uh, the variant is actually using GPT-4 uh, turbo with context stuffing the entire LCL docs into the um, into the LLM, which has some benefits over retrieval because uh, you don't have issues related to retrieval of the correct document chunks. Uh, you're just passing in everything. And so there's some benefits there that we could talk about at length a uh, different time. So this is running and it looks like it might be finished. So this is done and this is pretty cool. So I can go, I can go here, I can look at here's all the inputs. Here was my prod baseline. Here is my variant. This is, this is what I ran back testing on. And what's pretty neat about the pairwise value, we can really see the preference. And so in this particular case, it prefers the output from our variant over the baseline. And again, just as we saw in the previous video, we can actually click into here and investigate why. So you can go to the evaluator and it actually gives you an explanation as to why. So anyway, you can really dig into this, but this is a pretty nice workflow. So if we zoom all the way back out, what do we really do here? Uh, well, we had an example of an app running in production. This is kind of simulation of that. We collected five user inputs. We turned those into a data set. That's what we did here. We then ran what we call back testing on that data set with a new app variant. So like I want to test a new app version. In this case, my baseline used retrieval from a vector store. My new app variant used context stuffing. So I ran that. Uh, evaluation and then I so then that that resulted in a generation um, so that's right here for every input I produced a new generation or output from my variant that's great and then I ran this comparative eval saying hey which one's better here's my prompt and I kicked that off I just added the names of the two experiments and as we saw before you get this pretty nice comparative assessment with detailed evaluation so Pretty useful thing to do. If you have any app running in production, you can pretty easily grab those production logs, turn them into a data set, do back testing on them with like different variants, different chains you wanna test. And you can even do things like pairwise evaluation to say, hey, which one's better or worse based on some criteria that I can define. So 
really nice workflow, highly convenient um, for um, kind of testing at, testing different variants of, of chains that you want to, do you want to put in production? Thanks.